Oh, oh, is that our TV? I think that's our TV. Oh, that's our TV. No, that's that's our TV. Is there any our TV? There's. I see a lot of our TV in there. Hello and welcome to Heavy Metal Rex. My name is Oasis and today I am joined by Jordan and we're gonna be taking a look at his car. If you guys remember, and if you don't, I'll do a little recap. We actually installed the Killer B catch can system on his 22 WRX and we've been waiting, what, I'd say four months, three months? Yeah, three, four months. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to do was actually open up the catch cans on the day he needed to change his oil and see if there was anything inside. Now, I have had an AOS on my car for almost four months as well, and so this is gonna be really interesting to see how much oil is in there, and then if there's a lot of oil in there, I'm gonna try to open my AOS just to kind of see what's inside because there are some maintenance tips that you need to know for AOSs, and of course, catch cans. Now, these catch cans are different than some of the other ones, like uh, I think Radium has one, and somebody else has one. They're very unique because they have a little wing nut on the bottom that you can open and drain the oil. Now, we have a piece of Tupperware that we're gonna try to use, but I'm gonna guide you guys hopefully through this, but actually, there's really no guiding. We're learning this today, so we're all gonna learn together exactly how to do this, so let's take a look. So here's right here is the first catch hand that we gotta go look underneath. There is, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a little wing nut right here that we can undo and drain the oil, and the second one is back here, way in the back, you can see kinda right there, and same thing, there's another wing nut down below that we're gonna try to undo, we have this piece of Tupperware that we're going to use, and uh, just, you know, this very automotive friendly Tupperware. We're gonna use that to try and catch some of this oil and see what happens. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm actually just gonna be recording today, and Jordan is gonna do this, because in the future, he's gonna have to do this every time. Is it too big? Yes. Yeah, do we need like one of the smaller ones? Yeah. Do you have the ones that are like this big? Or maybe you have like a, I was thinking like a plastic cup. I have like a bunch of plastic cups at home too. Yeah, I have a plastic cup, but I just don't feel like it's still not gonna fit on there. Well, I mean like a plastic cup that, that's like foldable. Oh. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We, we actually got the Tupperware down there and that's gonna be the plan for the back can. The front can, we're actually just gonna take this screw off right here. We're just gonna take this clamp off and then this whole thing will just lift up. And I think that's gonna be the easier way to do it instead of trying to figure out, because I don't know how else you would be able to get something through all this underneath there, say for like a really small piece of Tupperware or like a shot glass, but I, I, don't, I don't know if I feel comfortable with that. So Jordan's gonna take that off and then we'll just drain it into this little purple plastic cup we've got. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. That's probably more than you need. I think so? Yeah, I just said pop it out of here, Yeah. pull it out of there and then, like... and the whole thing should just pop right out. Anything inside? No, right? Does it feel like there's any oil on the bottom? Yeah, I, I press on it. There's like a little bit of accumulation. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Oh, let me get a better angle. Interesting. That kind of makes yeah. sense because that's kind of where it's it's depositing it and it's supposed to catch it in the back. So yeah. I guess that's cool. So let's close it up and we'll go check the back one. I think that's good. Yeah. All right, now this one, I've already got the, I've already got the, the Tupperware down there. So really all we need to do is just open it up, open it up and see what happens. And if anything's in there, we'll catch it. Yeah, the Tupperware is not gonna move. We got it like wedged up in there. Oh, you got oil? No, I don't see. Oh yeah. It's actually not even that much. We'll get the Tupperware out here in a second and it's after a, he closes it up. Yeah, it's about how dirty my engine oil is right All right, now. so this is how much oil we got from the back end. I, this really not, see, it's about 3,000, about how many miles do you think? It's probably like 37. 3,700 miles in yeah. about three months. That's really not that bad. And it was from the back one. There's more research that needs to be done on our part to understand catch can systems as well, like why there would be more in the back than there is in the front. But if you have it and you're still a novice and all this stuff, maybe you'll experience something similar. Maybe the front one will be empty and then there'll be oil in the back one. So that's not bad at all. So now we're just gonna put the new oil, you know, change the oil, like do the oil change now. So something you guys don't know about Jordan is he likes to drop things. <laughs> So he actually has a Fumoto valve and he dropped the little plastic that keeps the valve closed inside of the oil. But this is a great time to see if there's any RTV in there. So he's gonna go grab like a spoon or something. We're gonna try to fish it out. 
Oh man, here we go. We got the strainer. Oh man, just make sure to clean it after. <laughs> Don't reuse it again. Oh man, where is it? Here it is. Oh, oh, is that our TV? I think that's our TV. Oh, that's our TV. No, that's that's no. our TV. Is there any RTV? There's. I see a lot of RTV in there. All those RTV bubbles. Are you, are you, are you being? Are you capping or? No, no, that's that's no, that's no, RTV this, bubbles. This from, this from the fish. Oh, that's from the fish. Yeah, it, it hasn't been cleaned. It's from the fish. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought we had RT. We got fish. No. We got fish guts. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't clean wow. when, I, when I got it. It was in the dishwasher, but wow. like, the dishwasher had it. No, yet. there's no RTV in these cars. <laughs> these I, people. Did you tell me you were making a joke? <laughs> you, you did you start freaking out? Like there's actual no, RTV no, in there? I was like, no, I was like, no, it's just fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fish. <laughs> yeah. It is actually really clean. Let's put it back in the engine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the oil sales go up to 10,000 miles. Yeah, <laughs> really. Hey, synthetics, they say you go up to like 13. Yeah. Like 15 grand. Now, that oil was like really good. There was, there was nothing wrong with that oil. You could have been fine. And even still, like, and I'm looking at it, like, it's, it's not that, it's not even like that dirty compared to like what I've seen. In Thank yours? you. Yeah, in my car. My car, after like, I'd say that trip down to um, Florida. down to Florida, because I, I raced a lot of people on the way. <laughs> I was driving, and I drove like pretty fast too. Yeah. And when I got there, I raced a bunch of people. I say after like track days was when I feel like it was like the dirtiest. Yeah. But I, because I got, I didn't even change it when I came back from track day. I just left it in there with a the track day, and like another thousand miles. And it yeah. was, and you still, it really wasn't that dirty. Hello, hello, hello. All right guys, so that's pretty much all we really wanted to do today. The oil change was extra. My main thing is I wanted to take a look inside those catch cans and then A, how to see how to open them, um, which we learned, just take off the front one and then just drain the back one with like a Tupperware or whatever you got. And just to see what was inside. And like I said, it's, it, we still have the oil. It, we didn't even put it away. There, again, really, this is all that was in there in 3,000 miles and it's, it's not even terrible. So if you're worried about your car and you know you haven't gotten AOS or you haven't got a catch can, I'd say don't stress out that much about it. In the long term, you do want one, you should get one. But if you're just commuting and you really, really don't use this car for a lot of fast driving and racing, stuff like that, you'd probably even be okay. I think that's I think that's the thing that is most important. A lot of tuners and a lot of like performance people will tell you like just go ahead and do it, but that's because in their in their line of work, they see some of the bad shit that happens, but they probably see like a lot of the more pushed cars versus like and and I I say this with the absolute respect. Grandpa with the WRX. <laughs> you know, he ain't pushing that car as much, and so he probably has less to worry about. Uh, so hopefully, well, hopefully this video was informative. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Before you go, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hitting that subscribe button costs you guys nothing and it gains me everything. Uh, I try to provide as much entertainment and information as possible, whether you're looking at my racing series, vehicular acceleration testing, or you're looking at tuner talk, which is actually a great series for newcomers and veterans. My only goal is to try to make the VB community better and I can't do that without your help. Thank you.